Pick 3. This is the Lynx 7 tablet. This is the same model I've been using for my little investigations into Windows 10. It's an Atom tablet, comes with Windows 8, upgrades to 10 nicely. It's possible in theory to install Linux on it, but the hardware is just unconventional enough that you're going to run into some nasty driver problems. You probably won't get the touch screen working, the volume buttons are problematic. It can be done, but difficult, very difficult at this point. Um, the first one of these I got broke down in a week and a half. Just bad luck on that one. So I've put another one for eBay and uh, using the parts to fix it. Gives me a chance to show you what's inside one of these things and I think you'll be quite impressed. The only fault I had was the section of the touch screen down here. Visually fine, touch went. I've already um, disassembled this one partially so make it faster for you to see what's inside. I will say that this uh, Lynx 7 tablet is not an iPad. You can actually get into this thing quite easily. Minimal glue, all screws, it's not going to need a heat gun or be arranged like a puzzle box. All you do is get your flathead screwdriver bit, no, flathead, stick it in, twist it, stick it in, twist it, pop the connectors off all the way around. Do start at the end that does not have the USB port on because that's the end of the main board and delicate stabable components. Start the other end, there's nothing so delicate or difficult to replace in there. When that's done, the back just pops off. There's the back, which I've already popped off. Standard uh, EM screen on the inside, nothing remarkable there, just plastic. This, partially disassembled, not doing that around, shows you what's inside the thing. It's all screws apart from one item I'll come to. Speaker, screwed in, remove screws, lift out. Main board, screwed in, remove screws, remove connectors, lift out. Now the uh, caution on the main board, this hole here is where the camera, would it be the back facing camera went. It's got a very delicate ribbon cable. So I tore that when I tried to disconnect it. So be careful with that. If you do want to uh, change the main board, you will have to desolder these wires here, which go to the battery, because the one component that is glued in is that battery there, which is glued onto the screen. So if you want to replace the screen, you'll need to replace the battery and vice versa. And that was my original plan, but uh, it's easier to change the main board than the screen, so I did that instead. Got connectors for the display panel, side buttons, currently missing rear facing camera, front facing camera, touch sensor, soldered on cables for the speaker and battery, and a standard clip connector, little sort of mini coax thingy for the wireless antenna, which is just your box standard printed ribbon thing down there. They're all basically the same. When you've desoldered those and taken all the connectors off and removed the three screws, the main board just comes out. See it is a fairly unremarkable thing, just the usual bundle of chips and not a whole lot on the other side. This is a 32 gig model, I'm guessing that the 16 gig model, one of those flash chips there would be absent. So this is um, easily maintainable, easily repairable. All the components can be replaced, although in the case of the battery, it could be quite troublesome. Whereas you could always just tear the battery out brutally and stick a new one in with some double-sided tape if you had to. So yeah, not an iPad, good tablet. Uh, performs pretty decently for something that's only got a gig of RAM and a 1.3 gigahertz Atom chip. And it's certainly a lot easier to get a part and repair than an iPad because those things are hell. And considering this thing's less than a hundred quid, that's, this is a very good purchase and uh, I would quite recommend it. Despite the failed screen I had, there's nothing that looks shoddy in the construction. I think that was just bad luck. So yeah. Link 7, good piece of kit.